We're making our own custom werewolf game today. If you're a fan of social deduction games like Mafia or Blood on the Clock Tower, stick around, because I'm going to show you how you can think of and design your own roles, and we'll handcraft some cards to go along with our game. I'm doing this because the summer is rolling around right now, and I want a fun game to play around the campfire. So join me in crafting your own Werewolf Mafia game. First, let's pick out some blank cards that we can either draw or glue a design onto. I've picked these cool Mystic Tree backed cards to match the magic slash fantasy vibe I want for my werewolf game. I've linked them in the description if you want to buy these exact same set. Then let's hop into Canva to start designing what we think these cards might look like. After searching around the elements and layouts, I have come up with this basic border design and card layout that should work well whether I print it out or hand draw it. Now with our basic card design, we can start making our own unique roles. But of course we have to start with the werewolf. This is the design I came up with after searching for some more elements within Canva. Now we have a design and a role to make real. We can start working on it in the physical world with those blank cards we got earlier. I'm choosing to hand draw and color my cards since I know permanent marker will do well on these blank cards. But feel free to print, cut, and glue if that works best for you. All I need for this project are my blank cards from earlier, a pencil, and a few permanent markers of different colors. Referencing my design that we made on Canva, I will sketch out where my elements need to go and use a bottle cap to draw a circle for my roll illustration. Still following my design from earlier, I will do my best to draw the image I chose. Choosing simple line images when you're looking through Canva will help you with this step if you also choose to hand draw your rolls. Then I marker it all out. I personally thought it would be really cool to have the title and the drawing match the color of the team's color. So for the werewolf, we're going with red. Once you finish markering everything in, we end up with our first nice finished handcrafted roll card for our custom werewolf game. Now I know the werewolf isn't all that exciting, but it is essential to any werewolf mafia game. So let's move on to some of our more custom roles that I have designed and how you can create your own. Before we hop into that though, I wanted to let you know that all these roles that we're about to cover are available in the description below. You can download a PDF that you can print for free. Or if you also want to show some support, you can throw a few bucks my way when you download that PDF. There is also a second link where you can buy my Canva template for the game and all the roles for just $5. You'll be able to change and modify any of the roles or add to them. You will also get 10 other card design ideas that I made for you as a bonus. Check these links out in the description below. Now let's talk about some of our unique roles and how you can design your own. First, we have the basic roles the ones you need for any Werewolf Mafia game. We have our werewolf that we already designed, but on the flip side, we have our townsfolk. The townsfolk try to deduce who amongst them are the bad guys, who are the werewolves, while the werewolves get to wake each night and vote on someone to kill between rounds. To make things more interesting, we can add in an investigative role on both sides. I called these roles the detective, and the Mystic Wolf. Both of these roles would have the ability to choose someone between rounds and discover what their role is. But even with just these four basic roles, you're ready to play werewolf with your friends. But let's go through the rest of the roles one by one to inspire you to make your own. Covering the red team first, we start with the vampire. Each night, if there is a dead player, the vampire can bring them back as a vampire minions. The minions only get to know who their vampire master is and don't get to know who any of the other red rolls are. If their vampire master dies, the minions turn to dust. If the vampire isn't discovered quickly, 
they may turn the whole town into their covenant. The vampire is a high chaos role because their minions will no doubt spread false information in order to protect their master. The assassin has the ability to kill someone during the broad daylight. The only reason the townsfolk may struggle with deducing the assassin is because they may be claiming to be a hunter who can also kill during the day if they choose a red roll. The Disenchantress has the ability to turn any player, be it a special townsfolk with a power or a red roll, back into a default townsfolk. This can take away powers from the townsfolk team or cause a little bit of confusion. The Mad Scientist is a special, really high chaos roll. They have the ability to switch players' teams from blue to red or vice versa. They also do not get to know who the other red rolls are, and they don't get to vote on who to kill each night. This means they can only win if they make enough werewolves to outweigh the townsfolk. The other red rolls also have to be careful because they don't know who the mad scientist is. But if they notice more and more werewolves are appearing each night, then they know a mad scientist is around helping them in the background. The Ghost Corrupter and Ghost Whisperer are two sides of the same coin. They both can turn any dead player into a ghost. However, the Ghost Corrupter can turn any player into a bad ghost, whereas the Ghost Whisperer can only turn a player into a ghost of their same team. So if the Ghost Whisperer chooses a dead player poorly, they may have resurrected a bad ghost themselves. Ghosts are a special role. They're still dead players, and they don't get to talk during the night or vote on anything including public lynchings or who to kill at night. However, ghosts can stay awake all night and talk during the day. These two roles are no doubt going to cause some chaos in your play, some chaos and some great fun, because the ghosts will likely be spreading either false information if they're bad ghosts, or may not be believed if they're a good ghost. Alright, let's move on to the blue roles, our townsfolk. First, we have the priest. They can protect a player from being affected by any red roll actions taken against them for the night. This means stopping the disenchantress from altering their role, and stopping any killing that they may attempt to do on their chosen protected colleague. The bodyguard is a similar role. They choose someone to protect just like the priest, but the way the bodyguard protects is with their body. Any actions taken against their protected colleague will instead happen to them. The twins are simple and sweet. There are two of them, and on the first night, they get to wake up to see who each other are. The bus driver can cause a bit of chaos. They choose two players, and whatever happens to one actually happens to the other, and vice versa. The prepper is ready for betrayal. If they are ever voted to be publicly lynched, then they must kill someone on their way through death's door. The mayor can reveal their role and count as two votes when voting towards public lynching. However, the lawyer can choose someone to protect from being nominated from public lynching. The paramedic can revive a dead player once a game and keep them in the fight against evil. The alchemist is definitely going to cause some chaos. Each night, they can change a player's role to a different, unused role of their same team. This means a priest may turn into a bodyguard, or a werewolf might turn into an assassin. The veteran counts as two people when balancing good versus evil, and if they are the tiebreaker, they also count as two votes during public lynching. This gives the townsfolk one last stand if the veteran is in play. Now let's move on to the unique solo roles. Solo roles are special. They have different win conditions depending on their role and their abilities. First, we have the Grave Robber. Once a game, they can steal a dead player's role and then play as that role for the rest of the game. Next, we have the Fool. They win by getting publicly lynched. This means they'll probably be causing a bit of chaos, trying to get themselves hanged. 
The lyncher is similar to the fool, but they win if their given target is publicly lynched. This means they'll also probably be trying to convince the townsfolk to hang someone that doesn't deserve it. The obsessive lover gets to choose someone at the start of the game to love. They win if their love interest wins. They'll probably spread any amount of misinformation to keep their love interest alive. And finally, we have the drunk. They are so drunk, they don't even remember who they are. If they are alive by the start of night three, they sober up and become a random available role. They could remember they are a simple farmer, or remember they have some dark powers and want to take over the land. Once again, check out the links in the description if you want to download a free PDF to print these out, or buy my Canva template to edit or add to or alter any of the roles I have just covered to design your own game. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have some fun deductions around the campfire or at your friendly game night. Stay crafty!